Okay, hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be um, trying to be quite quick, uh, giving you sort of an insight into uh, a new way of looking at the reincarnation, sort of the you know the way it works and perhaps some of the consequences of that. And I'm also going to be um, just reframing slightly my my big picture understanding of the universe. So I'll start with that. So if you uh, have seen my short videos, one of my most popular ones, got like a triangle, the 11 dimension universe that is God, Jesus. Well, I would actually now say uh, this universe is actually our grandparents universe and that all the galaxies in the universe with the um, phenomena that is at the center of each uh, galaxy that they call a black hole are our grandmother and grandfather's children and one of those the Milky Way is our mother and father who we call God who I call also Jesus. So I don't know the name of uh, any of God's brothers and sisters in this universe and I don't know the name of the uh, grandparents but um, you know I was even just you know half an hour ago thinking no it's not no it's not and then just thinking yeah no this this is it because it makes sense that things reflect in family. Now when you're born into this world most people still have grandparents alive and they see their grandparents and here we are sort of born sort of the bigger the longer version of our life the eternal life our soul uh, you know as we're born we can still see our grandparents you know far off telescope you can see other galaxies that's how we know they're there so then if this changes the the age that I was um, thinking that we were in the stage of our life thinking that well each galaxy has a black hole so that is a child of God I understood that so thinking that this universe was God's I then thought that we as children of God you know I was one of those galaxies you were one of these galaxies but as that's not the case so uh, most of the black holes in this universe were formed about six billion years ago. Now, it may they may all have happened at the same time, but we still get, we still hear or can see the uh, the gamma ray outburst that occurred when these black holes were made, and you can still pick them up now because they're so far away. You know they're all different distances away so we get the gamma ray bursts all at different times so if that happened six billion years ago the black hole was created in the milky way and within that black hole is another universe so but at the same time that that universe is created so basically are all the children you know the, right at the beginning, forget the Big Bang, right at the beginning every galaxy just begins as a dot, say, a, spe a speck of matter and a speck of plasma, right, and then grows. It might not start like that, but small, right? So there are six billion years ago, black hole was created at the centre of the galaxy and therefore a universe and therefore the beginning of all of God's children, us. So six billion years ago we were just a speck of dust. Two or three billion years later, now we're a bit more than that and we're actually capable of having a bit of an experience. So God picks out this solar system, one of the solar systems in his her galaxy and uh, creates a, a planet with conditions that can harbour life and sends us in 
to have an, a life experience. So, if you say, you know, we began, but we began very slowly and we had our first life experience and then, you know, a couple of billion years later we've had so many different life experiences, each time getting into slightly more complex animals, more complex things, relationships going on between us, and we're growing. Now, so that God would have had the same thing, um, not in this universe, but uh, in a. So, if you go one level higher up, so this is our grandparents' universe, which to get into it, you would get into it through a galaxy in a higher universe. So there is our there, and there, and so in that universe. All the galaxies would be our grandparents, brothers and sisters. So we're in this universe within a galaxy which is our mother and father God, Jesus, and all the other galaxies are God's brothers and sisters. So I've ba so basically, do you know what I mean? My, what I thought was the truth of the, the, of the universe being our mother and father God in fact, it's just sort of brought it a lower level down, and that makes more sense about how I feel about where we are. Do you know what I mean? I don't think... So basically, I don't think we have created our black hole yet. And we, we're, not re we're not ready for that yet. Because as soon as we create our black hole within the universe that we can't see from here, because God has... So our souls belong in in where in God's universe, but God brings us out here to experience lives because this universe is more mature. This galaxy is more mature. It's able to be stable and harbor life of, of our complexity. Now I don't know what complexity of life would be possible with, within our own galaxies within that universe. <laughs> It gets a bit confusing. So, okay, so uh, I'll leave it there. So, it's all the same, but just sort of brought down a scale. I've drawn a picture. I probably should have shown that at the start anyway. So, let's move on to the next thing. So, this reincarnation. So, we've been reincarnating all time. It's, it's all we know. Yeah, we, we have a life, you know, we die. You know, it's so familiar to us. Being born and dying, very familiar to us. We go for a little pause and then we come back. So I've been developing a kind of um, understanding of, you know, what what's expected of your lifespan on Earth. I mean, I used to want to live for 130 years, but... Now I'm 40, I can definitely see that by the time I'm 70, I'm not going to be that fussed about living so much longer, you know, when I th could think that, you know, after a period in heaven and coming back and, yeah, having to go through childhood again, but I could have then another, you know, go at life with a healthy physical body and everything, you know, youth. So... I, oh, we've all heard of the Four Horsemen. Uh, it's in the Bible, and I was on a year or so, or a couple of years ago, I was on this um, theology the, theologian website, you know, forum thing. Um, and there was this guy on there who said about the Four Horsemen actually being the four stages of a king's reign, and. And then from that, you know, like I said, it was a couple of years ago, I definitely see the four horsemen as, and I'll say it now, like the four seasons of your life. Actually, I see, I just thought of that earlier. Like four seasons, but I saw them as all, for the four periods of your life. So, uh, four periods of 19 years which 19 years is that metonic cycle that moon cycle the babylonians used it they would have got it from the sumerians it's a good way to measure sort of exact things you know because the moon is quite difficult to read so every 19 years the moon 
you know, re begins a, a new cycle and something you could follow with uh, stone circles and you'd know whereabouts the moon was in that cycle. Um, so this 19 year period, now you take four of them, that's 76 years. That's basically what we're told we will live if you read the Bible again, three score and ten, or if your strong man will live for another ten. Alright, so that's about that time. So, what if, so this is a bit of a what if, but I'm going to be looking into this more and investigating it and seeing what I can pull from it, because I think it might be true and it might explain quite a lot about what's going on with people. We have a lifespan of 76 years. Right, first period, white, white horse goes out to conquer. When when you're one to zero to nineteen, basically you don't really know what's going on. You're just you. You're out there trying to make your way, yeah. And to me, that kind of fits quite well. Brief description. Second period from nineteen years to when you're thirty-eight, the red horse. It's it goes out to war and and it has the bow. Now what I think about has the bow is. You know, it's a little bit smarter than when it was out just conquering uh, as the white horse, just fighting with whatever it came up against. The red, you can start to sort of lay back a bit, look a bit ahead, and you know, you've got a bow, you can take out your enemies without you know having to risk getting right up close to them. So you go out for war, you go to make your, you know, this is the time, your youth, you want to make your stand on the world. Third period. Black horse from the age of 38 to 57. It carries the scales. It's about balance, about weighing things up. It's about, you know, I certainly noticed at about that age sort of how I could save so much time if I just thought about things first. It sounds obvious, but I didn't really do it before. I've written, I think I just made this up, dominance, but it's, it's your dominant period. It's kind of your best period. Um, fourth period, pale horse, sickness, but it sort of, it's still sustains. It's still, you know, it might be sick, but physically and everything, but it's still got all the knowledge of before. It's still, you know, can still can be a contender, if you like, sustain. I made that up as well. 19 years takes to 1776. So if you look at the seasons, imagine white, the first season, winter you know because you especially at early stage you're not do you know what I mean you're not ready yet to make an impact you're still almost under the ground st you know storing up growing waiting to be able to make an impact and then spring you know move into spring they're your buds they the best years and the most beautiful if you like but not very productive then third period, black summer, you know, that's your most productive. You've got the harvest in there as well. And then autumn for the pale horse, you know, leaves are falling. It's beautiful. It's a nice time. <laughs> Just relax and go again. Right. What happens if you don't die at 76? What happens then? Now, I've seen lots of old people who are totally clued up. But I am going to have to investigate this. I've also seen old people who are completely not there. And I certainly saw with my grandma how I can't remember exactly how old she was when she got dementia. But she did certainly seem to begin this life regression where she thought she was. Uh, you know, early on she was just sort of a few years out. And then sort of then she was back at work doing her job as a telephone operate, operator, you know what I mean? And then, you know, she was almost like a child at some point. So, you know, if there's some sort of period, maybe it's, um, you know, say, you're supposed to be in heaven for seven years, maybe that most of that time is spent regressing through your life. And then, you should be being born into the next life. Because why hang around? You don't want to hang around. You don't want to hang around without the full potential of what you can be.
both a physical being, a spiritual being, an emotional being. <clears throat> Why would you want to do it with just two? So you come back. Now if you're still alive here on earth, you've gone through that life regression, and now you're being born. But hang on a minute, you're still alive, you're being kept alive by pills or whatever, and someone spoon feeding you and but really you're you're beginning now you know to exist in another life what effect could that have could this be you know heavy autism down syndrome probably not down not, not down syndrome i would say it's more likely to be one of the newer conditions because um you know, we've got these growing newer conditions as people are living longer and longer. So if people knew this, do you think they'd want to be clambering along in frailty, dependent on people helping them and pills, and if they knew they were actually potentially screwing up their future life? Because once they do die, then they'll be 100% in this new life and maybe they've been compromised because they haven't been fully with it. Maybe there will be lifelong damage from not being fully there in the beginning. So this is why I'm kind of making this video because I think potentially this could be quite important. Did I press record? Yeah. <laughs> Just, oh my god, did I even press record? Right, so I think that's basically what I wanted to say. And just one more thing, I had a, a comment today about my message from Lena video, uh, you know, criticising me for not taking it down after Igor kind of said he wanted it down. But look, truth is more important. And if this raises the, the discussion, you know, because AJ will not discuss things, even though he's still taking people on, calling himself Jesus, and they're, you know, clearly a lot of people are not benefiting from his teachings, and even though a lot of, you know, his some of his teachings are really good and really spot on, not all of them are, and he won't debate, and that's my issue, is that, you know, comes out and he says it puts it down it's like that I'm Jesus I'm the one who knows da 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 you know but he won't debate so and he should and I think that needs to be done but yeah all right ciao for now